Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else. Welcome to World 2023 Live from Seoul, South Korea. Today officially kicks off the 13th edition of the most prestigious League of Legends event of the year as 22 teams are fighting for the Summoner's Cup. I am Quickshot, joined by Coolboard and Raz. It's Worlds, baby! Let's go! Let's go, Raz. You excited to get into it? Yes, exactly. I mean, today is the start of Worlds, so anything that happened before that does not exist. Doesn't matter. Fair of enough. Course. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how many seats do NA has this, and how many does you have? We always had three. Wow, Nothing we're starting right, right, salty right, yeah. today. We're starting <laughs> salty today. Hopefully, the spice will continue throughout today's two best of threes. Before we get to any of that action, however, Worlds 2023 features a brand new format. So let's check out what to expect in the upcoming month. It's time to return to Korea for Worlds. And this year, there's a brand new format. Here's everything you need to know. They wiped them off the map! Worlds 2023 will include 22 teams from around the globe facing off in three stages. Play-ins, Swiss, and knockouts. All culminating at the grand finals to determine the winner of the pinnacle of esports competition. Damn your church! He is here to win! Planes will kick off the tournament with the first and second seeds from VCS and PCS, the first seed from LLA, CBLOL and LJL, and the winner of the world's qualifying series between the LCS and LEC fourth seeds. These eight teams will be drawn into two best of three double elimination brackets the top placing team from each bracket will face off against the second place team from the other bracket in a final set of best of five matches. The winners of each of these matches will take their place in the Swiss stage. Those two teams will join the top three seeded teams from LEC and LCS, as well as the top four seeded teams from the LCK and LPL. These 16 teams will be drawn into an initial set of eight best of one matches based on their seeding. Following the first round of play, there will be another draw for the second round to pair teams with the same record against one another. The tournament will repeat this process for three more rounds of play, pitting teams with even records against each other until they reach three wins to advance or three losses to be eliminated from competition. While the initial rounds are best of one, all advancement and elimination matches will be best of three. In total, eight teams will move on to knockouts. Oh! Okay, let's pause for a moment. That means that every match matters. All the excitement and stakes you can imagine for every battle. In the knockout stage, those eight teams will make their way through a best of five single elimination bracket, maintaining the high stakes you're used to at Worlds. No second chances, no breathing room, just one shot to win it all leading to the world's 2023 grand final at the Gochok Skydome in Seoul to determine the champion on November 19th. You can watch all of the action October 10th through November 19th on lolesports.com and be sure to log in to collect drops and be eligible for watch rewards in your region. Thank you so much, Atlas. That was a great breakdown. And I would have said every game counts, but every match matters and works just as well. Brand new format. I'm very, very intrigued to see how the Swiss will play out once we find out who will be joining our already qualified teams from the play-in stage. Let's take a look at the play-in's bracket because all of the emerging region teams from MSI play-ins are back. What are the expectations? Gulborg, you have not shut up about the returning performances and all the prep. What are you hoping to see in the next couple of days? Well, I'm really hoping to see a lot of them continue on the trend that they did from MSI. It's not very often we get to see the same teams from the same regions be back again. You will always have your DFM. Loud is kind of getting there as well now. Our seven's been here for a while, but it's just the fact that we will see the same matchups go up against some of the same teams again. There is possibility of it, depending on the outcome of today's bracket too. And the fact that you can just continue the story of not just the region, but the teams and specific players against other players is amazing to me. Yeah, and I'm interested in the philosophy from the failures from MSI coming into Worlds. Some teams have kept the same rosters as you've mentioned 
mentioned, other teams have slotted it out. A great example is Gam that we'll see later on today, like swapping out their bot lane and the excitement of those new players coming in. So I'm I'm excited to see which philosophy wins out and how much teams have improved since then. Do you think is um do you think it's it's easy or do you think it's very hard to actually get a read on how good or bad these teams could be? Because I think we've already got preconceived notions in power rankings, right? But it's been a long time, new patch, it's been a, a while since they played domestically. They're not all going to be good. I'm just okay. going to put it out there, okay? okay, okay. And it's easy to grasp us. I think there's some misconceptions for a lot of people that tune in. Of course, there's always the chance that a team will make it through and they'll actually be a contender like VCS was back in the day. And that's kind of what you're hoping for for some of these yeah. minor regions. But I can say, like, none of these teams are winning worlds, but that's not what they're playing for either. Yeah. They're moving their region forwards. They're continuing with their players. Hey, play and that's what's excited to, to, to look at as well. Yeah. But yeah, that, that, that's at least my take on it. Honestly, adaptation is the word of the play-in stage right now. Because as you've mentioned, how many patches have come? and completely change the meta yeah. from a really hectic uh, portion of it where you're seeing the LLA, CB LOL, even VCS like have really action-packed bloody games. But now we're seeing Orianna yesterday's games where you're seeing a lot more front-to-back, play it safe. I want to see if the adaptation has been made from some of these teams. Also, I want to see what yesterday's three games, um, what kind of insight it gives us into how the meta is going to play out. Obviously, it's a very small sample size, so we don't know. Yeah. One last quick question before we move into our pre-match. VCS, um, how do you think preparation will have been impacted by the Asian games? Obviously, the players were not going to be in the core units together. You know, I yeah. think it could have an impact. I reached out to them and, you know, each a VCS team had to send three of their players. Yes. Yeah. So that means Team Worlds had two players they could play with. So did Gam. So they moved in together and then they found a fifth member. And to quote the analyst, we had McDonald's scrims to keep code <laughs> and practice going. So coming into it, Asia Game has obviously had an impact on some of these teams. And yeah. that is something we will see from the VCS. I think it'll be pretty good for them. The fact that they, even though they played so many patches behind on the Asian Games patch, the fact the fact that they were going up against such talents in the uh, Team China, being able to win, in, win out in that series and then have that series versus Team Korea, yeah. you're not going to get that quality of practice anywhere. So whether or not those individual abilities can then be brought back together as a cohesive yes. team, that's what we're going to find out. Again, of course, we'll be playing a little bit later today. We'll take a look at how the rest of the teams will be performing. And with seven and a half minutes to go before picks and bans in the first best off of Worlds 2023, let's dive into PSG versus R7. I want to start with R7. I think they've got the uphill battle. I think my expectations is this team is not the my, the favorite, shall yeah. we say. But I do want to highlight that they didn't lose a single best of series in summer. Incredibly dominant. I think their time with the major lead of the entire summer season, 40% of game time. I mean, that I, is phenomenal. Look, I've been pretty high on the, on the PCS for a long time, but... I'm feeling excited for Rainbow Seven. I think they'll take a game. Like, they're an example of a team that from MSI Spring Split to this time, they've improved dramatically. As you've mentioned, not dropping a series. They've been really limit testers within their region. They've been bloody, diving constantly. I love to see that. I think they'll reel it back in in this meta, but I'm feeling pretty good they're about this They're taking a game of PSG? Yeah. Just to clarify what Rash just said, he didn't say they win the series. He's happy if they okay. win a game. Okay. But, okay. but I do agree as well because that's a hard sentiment. PCS is by far the best region coming in yeah. today, in my opinion, and R7 is looking to continue on their trajectory with the same roster that they've kept to build on what they may achieve at MSI. So let's talk a little about, about that mid laner, Mary. Um, very strong performances, very strong stats and whatnot, but I think, what was it called? Keep saying, if he's not an Ari, you're not. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be as harsh okay. on him now, but um, <laughs> Ari is by far his best champion. Let me put it like this: sometimes okay. when he's playing other champions, he does Doesn't look like impact, he's running right? it down a bit. There was a time when he was playing Jason playoffs. He literally dived level two by just running in an Asir. The Asir flashed away, and he died. So your expectations of what you're getting of Miru can be a bit up in the air. You might get him on a good day, and he's going to look insane like he's done in the Ari, and you might get him on a bad day where he will actually look like your solo queue mid laner. And, and the reason, the reason. I wanted to set it up that way. I think it is it is very important to share with our viewers, especially viewers that may not be as familiar with Miri in terms of which champions he can have an impact on. And also, we'll be pleasantly surprised if things go well. That's I the mean, excitement of it. Yes. There it is. And the hopefulness of it too, right? Yeah, and, and for me at least, I love that he's as, as aggressive as he is. His team is playing around it. We're seeing constant plays around mid lane, very creative plays from their support in which he's going around the lane so they don't expect them to be on the top side of the map instead of the bot side of the map. They're relentless in how creative they are in trying to make action happen mid lane. So I hope they don't play so passively with how we've seen uh, the meta uh, basically shaping up. 
I'm excited to see how Mira is going to play this. And one I mean, out. It, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Rainbow Seven as a team tradition, quite kill heavy, quite aggressive in the yeah. early game, not necessarily playing for like plates or controls. So mm -hmm. Hero, kill hero type of gameplay. Exactly. We'll see if that'll work. I, the reason I wanted to focus in on Mira specifically is because it's one of the golden oldies on the desk. Many viewers who may be as old as I am will remember Maple, the legend of the LMS, the people's champion of the PCS. He's back. He's in the mid lane, starting for PSG. I mean, when we take a look at his experience, we take a look at just how. <laughs> How many events this man has played, I think Mira's going to have an even tougher task today. First of all, you don't have to be plus 30 to know who Maple is. <laughs> I, I'm fully capable of I knowing know, who this guy is. I was starting to lose <laughs> that memory. <laughs> I was here when these things was happening, but that's also the experience you're going up against. While Maple has been here for so long, it's not like his skill level has actually taken a hit by this. If you watch the PCS as well, you would realize how skillful he was in the mid lane, how much pressure he actually had uh, in, in terms of just gaining priority, mostly playing champions like Asir as well, where he was insane, and then just moving it around the map and playing around uh, junglers like Junjia. Yeah, and the point that I wanted to hit, the amount of first team all pros he was able to hit since the beginning of his career, to this point, the amazing consistency that he's, ha that he's had, he's still the student of the game. And that's what's amazing about a career like Maple. I remember when he was on TSM and he was like carrying that corpse across the finishing line with how solidly he was playing. So I love seeing Maple. You, uh, you are right. It's going to be a little bit tougher for Miro. That's why he has the help of Leon's and Audi. So it's going to be a constant 3v3, 2v2 to get that guy ahead. Yeah, Maple did not play Jays most of the time. But what yeah. they did though instead was that they adapted to Levi where you cannot build Crown of the Shadow Green or any Jays. They just blow you up. So while they're not fully always on the adaptation of what champions meta, they're on the adaptation in how do we shut the meta champion down. And that's also what I'm looking towards a new meta for Mabel with. Let's quickly zoom out just before we dive into one of the players to watch. Um, give me a quick overview of what you're going to expect from PSG as a team, Rainbow Seven as a team, so that as viewers and myself, we know what to look for and what we want to evaluate. Yeah, I think that Junjia has to be a, a, a game you put out there, right? He was the MVP in so many of their games, but also their final summer MVP. And I think this is a perfect meta for Junjia with the kind of champions you're coming through. He was known for playing any, every now and then a game of sack, some Maokai, the Sejuani, Poppy, all these facilitators, but he's a guy that also loves being facilitated by his team. We saw the Lilia in the finals, but also now we know that Belvis is up there as a priority pick, Lee Sin is up there as a priority pick. I want to see Junjia be released and not handicapped by having to play these facilitating junglers. I love that you said Lee Sin, because look at the list out here. As you have mentioned, the wealth of options that he had, the AP junglers that I kind of expected going into this tournament to be really favoring him, but the fact that Lee Sin is a priority pick, and that's kind of the pick that he's made a name on, especially when he was a trainee on EDG. I want to see what he is going to be playing in, the, in this series because they're going to get let him go. He gets the green light for any action, and it's going to be his teammates that follow him. Now, listen, Raz, when you said that R7 going to be picking up a game against PSG, yeah. um, neither Gulborg nor my face was on camera at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we rolled some eyes a little. So with a little bit of time to go before we get the Moscow fan predictions up, okay. I want you to tell me how and where do you expect R7 to be able to pick up a win? I think it's going to come through mid lane. I think Miru, as much as we question him as being a coin flip player, though, when we see him play at his best, it's absolutely. Yeah, we, we see him play at his best when he's extremely aggressive, when they're looking for dives through mid lane with him. So I think he's going to be that one that leads the charge alongside Leon's and Odie. So that's how I think they're going to pick up a game. The problem is, is when it starts being a longer mid game, they're going to lose waves on side lane. That's when it gets it's a little bit harder for them, but they're going to give them a shock and awe, at least in one game. Before I get Goldberg to respond to this very... I'm ready. Optimistic. Don't give him too much time. Yeah. I want to see what the fans at home <laughs> have predicted, what you're thinking about the MasterCard fan predictions. Each day, you can head over to at MasterCardGG on X to participate. The vote has come in. Look, 88.5% in favor of PSG. I think that's, that's indicative. I think that's also expected in terms of the matchups. We've less than a minute to go. 2-0 or 2-1? I, I think it's 2-0, and I think it's for the reason that both these teams has Drake uh, uh, Soul as such a big win condition for them, and they prioritize the bot side of the map so heavily as they do, and I think with the skillful laners you have at PSG as well, that's where it will become very difficult for R7 to strike. I actually think, though, if you want to strike, you strike at the bot lane, because there's so many times where Wako gets left by himself on the first Herald, mm -hmm. and if you can have a play where instead of fighting at Herald, you cross map down on the bottom, and you try and shut the enemy AD down, that can set you up for more Dragon stacking towards the mid game, but I'm I'm curious to see how they will attack this, ga this game itself and the series in general. One player I haven't even touched yet is Bong, who I feel like is really good I isolated. If he's in that 1v1, he will do his job. So expect the 4v4 on the bot side of the map to be 
Look, I agree PSG is going to have an upper hand in, in a lot of these games, but Bong is going to be the tipping point. Well, we'll find out whether or not uh, R7 can rely on Bong to hit up that top lane or not. Ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else, without further ado, it is time to kick off World 2023 play-in stage with PSG Talent versus Movistar R7. World Championship, playing in the DRX and RNG game. Meiko, let's That's Kaori is a world's birthplace. The leaves begin to fall into the dark leaves. The leaves are deeper than the world. The leaves are deeper t 함께 물들어가죠. 2014년 2018년 그리고 2023년 월즈 다시 한번 한국에서 가을과 함께 시작합니다. 这个是我的人生，我不会放到最后一刻。我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我觉得，我
Tôi rất mong chờ được đối đầu với các bạn. Long still the last miller. Changyeon TRX의 우승은 모든 것을 바꿔놨습니다. 더 이상 불가능이란 존재하지 않습니다. Playing stage. 이제 시작합니다. Their first championship being in the spring of 2020. This org has since won six championships and is now PCS's most decorated team, PSG Talon. At this year's MSI, they picked up LLA's first international best of series win. Now, they're looking to make it two. It's Movistar or seven. Welcome everybody, come one, come all, it is the beginning of the League of Legends World Championship 2023. I am just touching and joined by the delightful Dagda, as we are going to be bringing you our first two series of the tournament, and I'm so excited, I'm literally, I'm welling oh, up now, I got butterflies in my stomach, man, it's, it's so, so good. good. It's so good to be back, <laughs> and I'm super excited to see exactly what's being brought to the table by the Plains teams as well, I mean, especially PSG Talon, a team I've been very hyped for, a lot of old faces that I would have known from playing the LPL, so I'm excited to see exactly how they will do up even Maple, Maple coming back into the roster but as we kind of like announced there I mean or seven picking up the first international best of win at MSI for the region now going to see if they can try and put it to PSG talent here as well that's the big thing like R7 like Latin America they kind of felt like a little bit of a nobody region for a while there but they got put on the map for MSI so it really felt like you could kind of maybe build upon that but look you know, we can be hopeful, but hope is sometimes a dangerous thing because they have got a pretty big task ahead of them. PSG Talon are no cakewalk, cakewalk. Yeah, they've looked absolutely spectacular. And I think kind of the team to beat coming into this when you start off with World Plains, I think the big one for me is trying to see if you can punish when it comes to the overextensions that we sometimes get from players like Junja. If you can do that, maybe you've got an opportunity, but let's be real, PSG Talon have been absolutely spectacular. Their objective setup is really, really clean. Their team fighting is great, especially with Wacko kind of providing that big deep DPS from the back line, and I think it's going to be a hard-fought battle here from Movistar Horror 7 to try and find that victory spot. Yeah, and look, 
It's been a while since I've had a last cast. The LPL ended very early. It's 13-13. We are now coming on to 13-19. Uh, so give me kind of a flavor of what we expected. So a little bit of it yesterday within the World Qualifying Series. Why are you expecting to be the kind of the must-haves or must-bans? Well, look, Oriana is broken as all hell. So yeah. Oriana definitely <laughs> They tried be their hardest. They, they really did. did. They definitely <laughs> did. But um, I think you start to see a little, pro maybe coming into this, a bit of a different look coming through from the jungle. Like you got to see at least a little bit of like the Talia starting to come through where they were willing to flex into the jungle. But we're starting to see a few more of those carry picks coming through in that jungle as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more of that. Even in LEC, we got to see Karthus brought out a little bit in the jungle, but I think we're going to start to tend a bit more towards that. Still got a lot of your carries in the top lane, the Jaxes, the Renektons, Camille starting to flex her way into that as well. Gwen still very, very strong. Um, and then your ID carry pool, a few of the lane bullies back. Lucian, Caitlyn, that kind of mixing things up, but you're still going to get a lot of that Kais and those kind of things as your top dogs come into this. Yeah, the hyper carries. We'll see what the builds of the Kaises are. I've seen a lot yeah. of seen a lot of cooking online going in, but I don't think shit. We shall wait any longer. We shall no longer hypothesize where we are going. New format, same stakes. You have to try and do your best. You have to take every game as it comes, and you have to put your best foot forward. We should be jumping into champ select straight away. Yeah, the best of three is definitely going to try and help that in a certain extent, where you can try and figure out your landing on the patch. Because as you saw yesterday, like two very different looks coming through for GG and BDS. And BDS going more towards, hey, we're going to go for that tank jungler in the Maokai and try and play towards that. And I kind of expect that from Odie a little bit here. I am curious, though, to see what Junja brings out. Because the bet stays, we already see the bans coming through. Lee Sin taking off. Junja, big Nidalee player, really likes trying to go for that more carry oriented style where he's allowed to even things like the Lilia as well, kind of in his wheelhouse. You can always imagine that Junja kind of going, do we have to ban Lee Sin? They're like, yes, we <laughs> have, have to ban Lee Sin. <laughs> can I have it? No, can we're not first dog? picking it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can I pet that dog? Exactly. Can I have that champion? No, unfortunately not. But the Rel again, still very, very powerful. Something that as well we kind of saw the other day is what something uh, like the, the Renekton kind of went through one game and then was not allowed after the fact as well. Poppy gets taken away here and a lot again, a lot of those facilitating early ganking junglers just taken off the board. Yeah, Senegon as well. Senna is definitely risen up in priority and um, you can see a pair of a lot of things like the Tam Kench as well coming back into that mix but opens up a lot in that bottom side as well to try and be just such a nuisance and such a difficulty to pair it or to take, deal with in that laning stage. On the upside there, Kali taken away. So I think you're kind of looking at things like the Talia, we saw a lot of priority on. Ori Azir, probably going to be high priority. But even some things that we saw banned away less yesterday, like the Jarvan becoming very, very strong because of Spirit Shojin. And with the amount of jungle bans we're seeing, that could definitely be something that was looked at early here. But I think Azir, Ori, probably going to be the higher priority. Yeah, we're interested to see the Vi kind of still being there. Look, at the end of the day, no matter what way the jungle kind of changes, Vi is still very viable because she's just point and click CC. Pick champ, C champion, pick champion, kill champion. But now we come into this one, PSG will have that first priority and they might be, yeah, exactly as you said, the Jarvan having a huge priority just given the amount that have been taken off the board. Yeah, it must be a case of, hey, look, we're kind of happy to pick whatever's on the opposite side of that matchup. Like, we can go for the Ori, we can go for the Azir. Ezreal, also another AD carry pick that's been very, very high priority in that bot lane. Very safe, great scaling, and the opportunity then for your uh, your support to start to roam around the map is going to be massive as well, especially if you've got that aggressive Jarvan on the opposite side. Yeah, that's locked in as well. I love the Ezreal here as well because actually the Jarvan kind of, it's almost like a game of chess really. It's like we got the Jarvan. That means the Zaya yeah. isn't as viable. You're going to have to look for something different because, you know, there's a sometimes uh, Z axes in League of Legends, but it doesn't work with Cataclysm, unfortunately. But that's not going to be picked, so we got the Ezreal locked in already. I feel like, yeah, I was going to say, the Renekton is such an easy pickup right now. It could be blinded into so many matchups. Yeah, 100% win rate for Bong as well, and a 4.8 KDA for him. So he's been very, very strong in this pick. And you heard the desk talk about it. Bong in isolation is terrifying, but Ozzy is no pushover either. So I'm actually really excited to see what this matchup is going to be in that top side. Uh, but maybe a Jax pick going to be coming through if it makes it through that second rotation. But at the moment, I think it is going to be AD carry locked in here. Zaya is a good option, plenty of peel. And then I imagine going to be that mid lane role picked up here as well. But looks like maybe they're looking at the Rakan instead. Yeah, just going to solidify that bot lane instead. Okay, interesting enough. PSG kind of happy with whatever uh, goes into that top lane matchup against the Renekton and willing to let those bands come in. So we do expect things like the Cassante and the Jax to be banned away. Yeah, I imagine so. On the upside here, though, I'm curious to see what Miro wants to go for because Miro has definitely been someone that um, you kind of heard him on the desk, a little bit back and forth on how uh, impactful he can be. Has looked spectacular and things like the Ari. We'll have to see what he can do now on this Talia. Got a lot of setup for him though, like at least the moment you've already got the Renekton, you imagine you're probably going to get some sort of CC coming through from your jungler as well. So these uh, flip backs, 
and even the opportunity just like deny the Rakan engage, deny the Jarvan engage is going to be crucial for Miru in this one. And I love it as well because it's a little bit of a flex as well, like technically as well. It can go to Audi into the jungle. So yes, we do expect it to go into that mid lane, but you do have that kind of flavor for you. And honestly, going into the next kind of stage, you said Oriana was completely broken. R7 recognized that now and go, cool, let's ban it away, take it off the table. Yeah, I think it'll be the Azir maybe coming through as well. So it looks like they're not as worried about Ozzy in that top side, but um, I think at this stage, yeah, just try and solidify a strong matchup in the mid lane because there's very little things that can actually deal with the amount of push that Dalia has. And that can open up a lot of opportunities then for Audi to try and control Junji in a lot of respects because I think that's where the most terrifying matchup is. You heard Gilbert talk about it on the desk as well. Like, Junji is very good at dictating the pace of the early game, getting PSG talent set up so they can play for those late game fights. And I think that's where if Audi can at least find that bit of wiggle room in the jungle matchup with pushing lanes, he can have a chance. I have a chance. The Jax, as you mentioned earlier, will get banned away, so we'll not have a Jax into an action matchup. Might just be the Cassante in that top side. We'll have to wait and see. But again, kind of putting in all these jungle bans. So many jungle bans. Six in total. Technically seven, because the Arel can still be flexing to that. So really, really going to see if Audi has, you know, kind of, go is he going to go for Talia? <laughs> or if he's got something else in his pocket? Yeah, I don't think we'll get any of those funny picks that we're seeing on the screen. But I mean, look, he's Ooh, the Vi's cool. gone was one for him as well. Diego was his other most, like third most played when you look at the stage one in the Maokai gone so looks like he is going to be trying to play a little bit of that carry oriented style which traditionally is not kind of what we see from it is but more as you say the tank focus so with the setup you have from Talia, that's a pretty strong mid jungle but you have to be so careful because Jarvan can interrupt that incredibly well I'm curious to see what Maple actually decides to go for here I think Azir, Nico, both these could work out very very well and just providing great team fight which is kind of where PSG like to sit that's the thing as well like you look at the composition from R7 right now like outside of kind of like you know in terms of their carries they're just kind of poking you down making sure your health bars are down about two thirds 50% then they go for the engage with maybe a flanking Renekton and a Viego coming in from the side but if you have just have this kind of Venn diagram of death with the Rakan, the, the, the Cataclysm, and of course the Pop Blossom, you're going to have an awful lot to kind of throw back at that. And let's just add even more circles <laughs> to the matchup if you're going to lock in this Kennen as well. Yeah, and Kennen did get some really nice buffs on this patch as well, coming into 1319. So I think he's in a really strong spot. I think we're going to see him more and more at Worlds. I mean, you've already got, as you say, like, now, just more circles to the Venn diagram. It works out incredibly well. Yeah, this is a very, very strong team fight team for PSG Talon. The good news as well is push in top. You've got good control over bot side as well. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for Audi to try and get into the face of uh, PSG Talon. But uh, on the opposite side for R7, I mean, you've got great skirmishing power if they can try and set those up in the early stages. That's the big thing. And as well as that, like with the Talia and the Nautilus, fantastic ways of delaying engage, with great ways of stopping them from getting on top of your carries. So really is going to be how they're able to execute on the composition, but I will say for PSG, the great thing about all this engage is that even if they lose one player, they still have options. Yeah, I think the big one for me coming into this is like, when I watch PSG Talon's games, they're incredibly good at, hey, we want to reset on time, we want to set up our mid waves and set up our waves states correctly for our objective setup and get in towards Dragons. And with a composition like PSG are playing, you want to set up for flanks. You want Kennen to be coming in from one angle, Nico from another, Rakan coming in from another side. You want to make sure you've got multiple different angles of attack here. And I think that kind of plays in towards what has been the strength of PSG talent. So for me, this is kind of R7 saying, hey, look, we want to try and disrupt that. We want to get in early, get some early skirmishes going, particularly if we can try and play around this Renekton topside for things like Rift Herald, and then look to try and set up something for ourselves where we're just coming into these fights with an early lead and preventing you from getting that vision that allows your composition to function. Well, no expectations at the moment. 0-0 zero, zero on the board. You don't really know who's going to pop up, who's going to make a moment of themselves. And it really does kind of come down to, doesn't matter about the rest of the season, it's all about now. You have to get a good start. PSG Talon versus Movistar R7. Game one of the League of Legends World Championship 2023 is about to begin. You hear the cheers from the crowd there. Excited to see R7 take the stage, but we're going to have to see if they can try and continue what has been, at least for them, the campaign started last year, our last MSI, to try and set themselves up with that first win. They're going to have to see now if they can do it again against PSG Talon. But PSG Talon, honestly, we were kind of talking before the game. If PSG Talon don't make it in towards groups, it feels like a failure for this team. They are so incredibly strong. Plus, even having guys like Corgi, the ex-EDG uh, assistant ca coach, when they won Worlds, like this is a team that is set up to take over the region, continue the legacy that PSG Talon have. And it's been 
amazing to see how they've kind of continued that legacy for. Absolutely. I mean, like, it's, I don't think it's unfair to say that PSG Talon have just been dominating in the PCS ever since they kind of became PSG Talon. And it, it has just kind of come down to how they want to try and, you know, progress, how they want to try and push for things as such like that to get beyond the playing stage. And then even further from there, of course, new format here in the playing stage, new format in the Swiss as well. So in the group stage, so we'll see how far they can go. There's definitely an awful lot more uh, up in the air. It's definitely not as clean cut as it used to be. I mean, I'm excited to see just even how some of these new champions coming into this kind of work out. Like, Kennen having the uh, the buffs that he got coming into this is, I think, going to be an incredibly strong matchup into the Renekton. This was always a bit of a skill matchup, depending on how you positioned yourself in the lane. If the Renekton could try and close the gap, get onto the Kennen, you're in a good spot. But with the likes of the Summon Airy, if you're just getting poked down, it's so difficult to try and manage. You can already see Bong losing a good bit of damage in this early laning phase, and the push should be in a good spot for Azzy. A bit of an engage down in the bot side, but no level two hit by the Nautilus makes this one a little bit harder. Aggressive move there from Seo with the big carries from MSI. Yeah, I think uh, Lin's just missed out on one of the CS, so you can see a little bit behind on the level two spike. So even though he went in aggressive, didn't quite have the level that he's expecting to, so they couldn't quite go all in there. But you can still see push going in favor of Seo and Lines for the moment. But I do think as Wacko gets access to level three, he'll be able to start getting control over the slain state. And that's where it'll become a little bit easier for uh, Junja to try and look for maybe some control over this bottom side, like get into the face of Audi. But um, I imagine we're going to see a lot of pressure from Junja towards the lanes. And that's kind of where he's been a staple for PSG Talon. Yeah, well, since it is the beginning of Worlds, don't forget to log in and watch on lolesports.com to ex earn exclusive Worlds 2023 drops like emotes and icons. Lots of free things. Everyone likes free things. <laughs> I like free things. Yeah, great. I mean, look, it's gonna simple economics, isn't it? I was going to make a joke about yesterday, but then I stopped myself. Free, free, free oh. things. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to, you. <laughs> I wasn't even there. <laughs> That's not even my region, but sometimes it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> you don't kick him out when he's down. That's just bad. But, uh, you know, I think for... Um, for a lot of these like drops and gifts and stuff like that, it's actually kind of sick. I'm a little bit sad that like I end up working these events a lot, so I end up missing out on them. Yeah, so I know, just right? Like, oh, can I just can you just add it to my account? I Is always message thing? my flatmate and I'm like, hey, turn on oh, turn on PC, please. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> I would message my brother, but my PC isn't even there anymore. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're home, but you're not home. No. <laughs> home. I'm home, but I'm in a hotel, which is yeah. a weird <laughs> one to come back to Ireland. For. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's been a pretty quiet four minutes or so so far at the start of this game and honestly it's kind of what we expected to happen PSG they don't really have a huge amount of ways of kind of affecting the lanes unless the Jarvan comes in and Junja just hasn't really had an opportunity as all these lanes have, except for bot lane obviously have been pushing in yeah and I think that's what we're going to wait and see for a little bit I think the real fight is going to start to kick off when this dragon starts to come up like now that Wacko's hit level three we'll be able to shove out this wave get his own reset in to match the reset from sale and then they'll be in a decent spot to try and control the wave um, especially when you're looking at, hey, look, we've got so many ultimates to kick off at level six. Rift Tower is going to be another big one for PSG Talon, but a lot of it's going to revolve around, hey, can we try and get multiple members up towards this top side? Because I think if you don't have, like, Woody on his way as well to try and help this one out, um, there's opportunities for Adi to try and play around Bong, like get a quick combo there to take out Ozzy, or, you know, a lot of setup that can come through from Miro as well. So it can make the team fights a little bit tough with just um, trying to play into what Aura 7 have in that 3v3 skirmish. And the thing is, like, you know, it's been passive as such, but you can see the CS leads in the top lane, a little bit of CS lead as well in the mid and the bot. Just small little incremental advantages being kind of brought up here for PSG Talon. And Audi, unfortunately, he's sitting on a ward. They have full recognition and vision of what's going on here. He's not really going to find much else, but we are eking towards having a level six potentially. And ooh, Audi, they know you're there. And there's a Jarvan off to the side as well. They're going to try and fully engage onto this one here. The flick back does not land as the flash was used by Maple. Audi taking a lot of damage, still has his flash if he needs it. Good rock being thrown here by the Talia means that nothing else is going to come out of it but flash burnt by Maple. Yeah, great bait though from PSG, right? They're like, hey, look, we know he's on a ward. We're going to try and make a play. And you can see in the opposite side, or 7 did have vision down to the Raptors. So they knew that Jarvan was probably going to be in this top side, but decided to go for the play anyway. Maple's flashed down, but you got a good amount of damage returned onto Adi. Now that the level sixes are hit, this is where I'm starting to get a little bit more kind of ready, if you will. Anticipation is building as we know that these teams are going to go for it. And I love what R7 are doing, recognizing, hey, we just saw the Jarvan mid. We can be aggressive. We can start to push this up a little bit further and maybe get a bit more of a, a lane pushed in spot side. Yeah, I think the, the downside for this is that, like, Leon's... Or sorry, for the downside for PSG is that Leon's has a good amount of potential here against Woody that we might just see now. 
And that's kind of the downside is if you ever try to go forward as Rakan, so much of that CC can be plonked in your direction. can make it hard to go aggressive in this matchup, but at the moment, you're still going to be able to find, there's a, or you're going to be fine. There's a good amount of CS underneath this tower. They got Adi down in this bot side just to make sure they continue this push in. They even start up the uh, the Dragon here with the amount of control that or 7 have over the bot side. I'm watching to see exactly what Maple wants to try and do because it wasn't even top. We'll say I'll look for the... Knock up, didn't oh, land it, flash in, they get the root down, Waku has to cleanse, there's a lot of damage coming down, first blood, oh, not quite! That Mystic shot was a hair away from setting up R7 in the bot side. Yeah, I love the aggression though, you, they see that, hey, look, the knock up is completely missed, and Miru knows it as well, so Adi gonna finish off this uh, dragon, and now that Talia's on the way, Jarvan though, Junja waiting in the wings to try and turn this around. I love this move from R7 as well. They built up the pressure bot side, had a ginormous wave, so there's no way it's coming from there. And not only that, but Junja dropped a ward on top side that immediately got him found out. So they knew where the Jarvan was. Great reactions from R7, get themselves the reward in the first dragon. Yeah, they do end up getting the advantages, obviously, with the cleanse being down, the flash for Woody being down and that. But, I mean, they burnt Leon's flash as well. Most of that was, the CS was picked up underneath the tower as well by PSG Talon. So it would have been nice if they could have got slightly more. But still, I love that we're getting this, uh, this uh, aggressiveness out of War 7 to try and find these little advantages. And of course, it's just kind of how these teams are playing. Junja was spotted before he came down here. He did clear out a pink ward before, or a vision ward before he came down here. So he, they know he's roughly in this area, but is he, are they willing to bet he's waiting? No, I think it's a good job from Junja. Like, come down, escort the wave in for PSG, make sure there's no funny business from Audi. He actually stays close enough to the wave as well, where he pings level six, which is kind of the, the big mark you want to hit just before you come in towards this Rift Herald fight that's going to be happening in about 10 minutes time, or 10 seconds time as well. So you know you help your own bot lane get the reset, and PSG can actually drag Woody up as you can already see now, towards that Rift Herald, uh, whereas they can keep Wacko safe and sound on this bot side as he's about to ping over to level six. Yep, gets himself the Feather Storm, so very hard to kind of lock him out down once more. Audi is level six as well, so should have the Heartbreaker. And I mean, look, all the pressure and all the great things that are happening for R7, they are paying the price. It is a push and pull game. and. I'm going to stop myself. They're waiting in the wings here. Does Maple walk towards it? That is the question. Woody is there as well. They're going to get the stun down. No rule. He really needs to land that little bit of CC. That flick back just missing is going to unfortunately mean we'll go on for first blood. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened with Leon's. I think he was trying to hex flash over the wall to follow up on it, and he failed the hex flash and hooked the wall. So there wasn't really the follow up there that they needed. Junja had started up the Rift Herald, but I mean. At the moment, you still got a good amount of control here for R7 in the jungle. Yes, they used Audi's ultimate, which is a bit of a, a sucker punch, and they might just back away, but it looks like at the moment PSG aren't as confident to try and go for this. They want to get the reset onto Maple. They'll now have to come back into lane before they can really look for this. Yeah, bot lane should be pushed in here by Wacko, and that should be kind of the, the, the real trade-off right now. Does have, still have TP here onto Miryu, so should be able to kind of get down, clear this ward, and join up if he's needed around that Rift Herald. Yeah, and that's why R7 get mid prio off the back of Maple having to reset. Now they know, as you say, Miru can always join in, so they've got the numbers advantages. So I'd be surprised if PSG really want to try and contest this. Oh, no, they get the root down, they get the knock up as well. Level 6 hit, the Cataclysm comes in for Junja. He does get the knock up at the back of it. There's a slightly Maelstrom, but it only really lands onto one, and now they can turn and burn for this fight. First Blood finally goes over to Seo. Nice knock back here for Miru as he gets on top of Two, the pop blossom is decent, but there's no damage right now. The resets are coming in. Double kill for Seo. R7 are doing well in the early game. R7 are coming in hot to Worlds 2023. Miru TP's in. They get the fight. And PSG, way too over aggressive. They didn't have the numbers. They didn't have the setup. And everything rushed and everything goes awry. Seo doesn't have flash or heal. Doesn't have his... Arcane shift either, and that's a shutdown there, just not expecting the rat to be in the bush. That's a big win for PSG though, because after you just saw that fight go wrong, having Azzy now pick up two kills off the back of this means this Ken is going to be kind of terrifying as this game starts to go on, at least they get something back, but still R7, massive, massive play for them, and you get to see it here, right? You can see Miru catches that wave on bot side, and immediately Zaya starts to move up, but Leans is already engaged here. They get a massive knockup onto two people, you just don't really have the damage because Junji immediately has to get out of the equation. Odin manages to flash away from that engage, so the Kennen ult not really doing as much work as he wants. And as he pointed out in the fight, massive flick back from Miru, gets the CC, gets the damage down, and sets up them for those resets on Odie as well.
Yeah, just skirting around the vision in that top side there. And uh, Seo, sadly, had already used his Arcane Shift in the early game. That is a hell of a cooldown there. I think it's like 20 plus seconds yeah. at the first few levels. So really, really unfortunate there. Look, it's a, it's a small win back for PSG, but R7 is still going to be feeling pretty good there. You can see there the Mastercard lane economy massively in favor of the kind of rest of the map apart from Bong. But in fairness, he knew he was playing weak side anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where you're kind of going, hey, look, the extra gold onto Seo is going to get him towards his Triforce, get it, going to get him up towards his um, his tier item as well, and you're going to be totally fine. I think Bong definitely does want to try and like stay at least even in this lane, though, because when you're a Necton, you just become nothing if you yeah. start to fall behind. So Ozzy getting those two kills was actually pretty big for them. But unfortunately, as you said, like we were talking about, like Seo giving over that kill in the early stages now means that Ozzy a lot of these fights are going to rely on him. The Zaya just isn't going to be able to keep up with the damage the Sail is going to be able to churn out as long as he's landed the Mystic shots. So this cannon is going to be the menace that PSG Talon need to work on. And the big thing about that last fight as well is that we kind of, we saw all the ultimates, but they were kind of like Cataclysm a couple of seconds later. Then it was yeah. the Slicey Maelstrom. Then a couple of seconds later. Then it was the Pop Blossom. It wasn't a big wombo combo. It was kind of one after the other. When you're able to get those all together, that's when you're going to see a huge amount of burst coming out from PSG. And R7 need to be very, very wary of that. But yeah, you can see by the total damage, it's uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, in favor of uh, the cannon right now because of just all the poke there able to throw out. Yeah, and that's why we kind of need to look at the flashes as we start to come in towards a lot of these fights, right? And it, it's specifically on towards Miru and R7. He's the flash you need to worry about. Seo will be fine. He's got his own arcane shift to be able to get out of there. Bong has got his way to slice and dice his way out of a lot of that damage. But if it's Miru getting caught, he's just going to get completely wiped out. And if you then have that follow-up coming through from PSG talent, it very quickly starts to snowball out of control. So that's where PSG, as you say, they need to kind of play patient and actually start to set up themselves up correctly. And unfortunately, that has been the biggest problem with PSG Talon is just that impatience coming back to bite them at times. Yeah, we saw that R7 tried to overload the top side there, but really not in a position there. I think that Asi was just very, very smart of how he played because, cool, my, all my team's bot side, we're taking Dragon. I do not need to be aggressive right now. Backs himself away, and it doesn't really lead to anything. You will have still have the uh, Riftout to be used, but where you use it's going to be key here now for R7. Yeah, I imagine that this is probably going to go down in towards his bot side, like just try and snowball Seo even more. There is an argument as well to try and get on towards Miru, but I think you're so vulnerable if you're trying to overextend in the mid lane versus Maple and Junji, which is the, the one-two combo that they have. It'd be so risky, but maybe, just maybe they're looking to go first. I'm going to try and pop it into Miru, but again, that this is just kind of priority in the top side now. Maple making sure that this does not have a clean push, and that's going to be all plates going over to the, the jungler. The jungler. Not the worst thing in the world with a Viego being a carry, but definitely would have preferred it to go on to the Talia, especially right now, to get that first item. And that's what I was kind of saying. Like, they didn't have vision on Junja, so it's so scary to try and push up that far, especially with Woody even out of the equation as well. He wasn't showing on bot lane, so they completely back away and don't get as much as they like to. But yeah, Viego getting it is nice, but you definitely Definitely need to get Miru into a position. Like you can see, one of the few people that doesn't have a uh, mythic item picked up for him when it comes towards the damage dealer. So he'll be able to reset and more than likely pick up his Leandre's Anguish. But still, this is giving PSG the opportunity to get the deep vision down, try and spot it how they want to attack. And it looks like it might be Miru who's the target of that. Yeah, Miro just wants to try and clean up a bit of these ways. I do think they have enough in their uh, inventory just to be able to get that last little bit of gold towards their item. Maple is just going to stop them off. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I felt like that dummy stayed there a very long time, <laughs> like a lot longer than it more normally does. But, I mean, double Triforce on the side of R7, they have got a pretty decent one. But, yeah, you can see... Yeah, that lane economy is starting to get bigger and bigger for uh, for PSG in that top side, and it's becoming a bit of an issue because, again, like you said, it doesn't become about the laning phase anymore. It becomes about those team fights. Audi is going to get jumped on here. Will not have a huge amount of damage thrown onto him just yet. They've invested two ultimates. There's going to be Minero coming back on top of this one here, though. Junja immediately flashing after the fact to try and make sure he stays alive, but he does get taken out. Woody can't get the root down. TP's coming in. That's going to be the cannon trying to jump, or Maple, excuse me, coming in afterwards. Minero cannot just be walked over this Audi gets a reset will not get the flick back and they will trade back one for one so it's a little bit of a scrappy one there for PSG they thought they found someone yeah they've tried to get the pick but just not enough damage and a good wall coming through from Miru as well because you've already got that ultimate there for Audi to get himself back out of the 
the harm's way, but because Junji had already used the, the flag and drag, wasn't able to follow across, same with Woody, so they end up over committing then for the pick, and at least R7 are able to get something back as Wacko answers in return. It was a 4v4 bot side, but actually in the top lane, it was a little bit of a 1v1. We saw both ultimates used, we actually see the flash from Bong used as well, but let's have a look at this one here, because Audi, they have full information on him, and that's why they feel comfortable to go in and try and get him out off, off by surprise. Yeah, and you can see, like, yes, they get a ton of CC down, but the damage just isn't quite there, so Audi's able to flash over the wall, and, like, I thought it was a little bit of a dangerous wall coming through there, but actually worked out. Mirror gets the kill, but unfortunately to try and do so, he ends up way overextending. Good knock-up then for Woody as well. You just find that speed for Wacko, and with the W popped, Zayag ends up getting the movement speed towards our target, so she's able to just chase that one down. Oh, uh, okay, so absolute was, soldier. Yeah, <laughs> so interrupts the TP coming in, and that's why he lost a lot of his health, lost yeah. his flash, and now he's lost his life. That's very unfortunate. He was trying to be an absolute bro. Does have the slice, Wait does have sec. the dice, Wait a sec. and he's able to get himself out there. Bong, despite the pressure being thrown onto him, is holding his own on that top side and doing what he needs to do for his team, keeping the cannon away. Yeah, Bong doesn't crack under the pressure, able to move back, get out of the position, and now R7 trying to set themselves up as well in this mid lane. Wacko needs to be so careful. Yeah, needs to be very, very careful. That mid lane going down could be huge. There's a pop loss oh in the one, the God. three, the flash is good, but can they get the damage afterwards? They do get Seo. The bomb comes in straight afterwards. A slice and dice will get him back over the wall. But I mean, just as Dragon's about to spawn as well, Rift Herald on the, on the on this field as well, PSG should be able to get so much with this. Yeah, great pick from PSG. Immediately, immediately moving over towards the Rift Herald. With 40 seconds on towards Dragon, they can even get the reset, use this Rift Herald then in mid lane to get pressure and commit towards that Dragon as well. So really great timing there. Again, this is why you gotta be so careful and trying to contest on that mid wave. PSG have so many different angles of attack and they catch out Sail, they're such an important member for that. Look, it is only a one kill, but you do get the tower. You do end up trading it though for a Rift Herald, tower in top lane, pressure around this Dragon in 20 seconds as well. Audi's nowhere near it, so the junglers are actually gonna find each other saying, so sorry, didn't mean to be here. And it's a little bit of a 2v2 for the moment, but I mean, it's it's a jarb, and there's not really many situations he's going to be able to knock it out of. Yeah, the thing is, though, they've now committed several members in R7 to this top side. You're going to only delay time until this dragon comes up. You'll have PSG who are going to be in a position to try and follow up on that. They're basically PSG Talon are trying to delay the opportunity for R7 to go towards this because they'd love the TP to be up for Ozzy. Probably won't be, as R7 kind of realized that. It looks like they're going to immediately move over towards that objective, but you're still getting good reset timers here for PSG. And now they can start to try and contest this as uh, Ozzy, with push on top, is moving down. Yeah, Audi might have to use his own ultimate there. Not quite sure what happened there with the hook, but he misses it completely. The pop lost him on the two. No jungler now available. Flick back is decent on the Junja, but there's just not the damage right now from the Salia. Lion's just going to get taken out, and this is starting to change the momentum of the game. R7 had a good start, and now they're starting to fall apart. PSG just picking them away bit by bit. Yeah, I think when you're looking towards this, R7 just need to take it slow. Like, see if they can get some poke with Sail, get some poke with Miru, like, get the vision down so you're not running in towards Maple every single time. But even with the flash down, Maple's able to make it happen. Now you get, well, they haven't moved over towards Dragon, but you'll have to get this mid lane tower at the moment. And R7, well, well maybe not. R7, able to delay this. A lot of PSG kind of scattering to the four corners, so not committing enough for the mid lane tower. Just yes, but nervy. Charles the Cannon Minion couldn't do it for PSG, unfortunately. But yeah, let's have a look at this fight all the way back to this mid lane, because they really overcommit for this tower. Yeah, I mean, you've already got Flash there as well, coming through for the for Zale. So he should never really be getting caught there. He probably had the Arcane Shift as well, but just not reacting in time. And then this as well, again, like, just overextension. Like, what is Le Leon's going to be able to do here with Audi? If, like, Miru, yes, can try and come in, but actually just ends up cornering off his own teammates in that situation. And Seo has got to play super far back here because he's worried about, you know, the cannon coming in, Maple being in position. That's why, again, we're kind of saying, hey, look, you need to be able to set yourselves up early as or 7 on these positions, like, control the choke points so PSG Talon can just run in on top of you, but they just haven't really set themselves up for success in that regard. And the thing is, is that, yes, we are seeing a, a trade of sides right now, PSG getting the Dragon top lane being pressured in, but it's always PSG coming out on top. They're now getting bot lane pressure. They got the mid lane. They're getting so much more bang for their buck that it just feels like R7 are just constantly behind. Like, it's going to take it probably, and maybe even another wave. It might just about get lucky, but I think, yeah, the cannon's going to feel fine and walk up to this. Yeah, I mean, I probably won't commit much to try and keep it off, so eventually Miru will be able to get this, but as you Say you trade mid, dragon, and bot side terror here. Just be very careful as bomb because you do have uh, at least Jarman hovering over the side, but Leon's and Audi are waiting in the wings as well, so we'll just back away. 
Oh, oh interruption. Hook. That's there's still a flash and a cataclysm for Junja, but I think he's just oh the nice little bit of movement. Had himself the gore drinker for extra healing, but gets taken down, heartbroken, and this is where you're gonna try and thrive as R7. Get those small pickoffs and build. I keep thinking one team has an advantage, and immediately yeah. it's like, nope, the we're ultimate right back caster in curse. This. Yeah, yeah. I mean look at the gold, right? Like 600 gold between the two teams, nothing whatsoever. I mean, a huge amount of this still is going to be on the cannon in the top side, that like big gold difference. But like, Seo doing good damage. Audi as well, you can see how much damage he could do to Junja alongside Lion. So, like, there is a lot on Or7 that can still be brought back here against PSG. So, you can't just like wander into the bot side, you don't really have the opportunity, the vision to spot it exactly what the response is from R7. Absolutely, and I think the big thing for R7 getting that pick as well is that and it's not just about getting the gold, which is nice, obviously, but yeah. it's also getting the flash because Junja is going to be the big main engage and everyone else follows up with it. But great hook here from Lions. Yeah, I think it was kind of just greedy from Junja, to be perfectly honest. Like, all you had to do was walk into the dragon pit, flag and drag over the wall, and you're out fine, right? Like, walking that way through all that vision is just going to cause you issues, especially when it hasn't been fully cleared out. So, nice job from Lens to get that set up. And I think at this stage, then, you got to try and go, hey, look, PSG, just take it slow. Just make sure that you're setting up properly. You already have seen that they can get a ton of picks when they're given the opportunity, they're playing well around their vision. But the problem is that now with that pick as well on Junji, not only the flash is gone, but a lot of the control you had in River is gone. You can see like all that bot side vision has been cleared out. They're starting to get control over this barren area as well. And that's where it now becomes a little bit more difficult for PSG to find these flank routes for their squad to get on towards or 7 I'm looking at two massive items which have been completed there. Void Staff for Miryu, who's going to try and make use of it right now. The Pop Blossom just a delay. Double up in that one there. Doesn't get the flick back on top of that one. Good flash away from Miru and by Bong. They're looking for an engage in the mid lane, though, as we see Junja and the rest of the team looking for more. They get the knock up here and the charm coming out from the Rakan. A shutdown comes out. Bong finally gets himself a little bit more redemption as he looks for a little bit more in this mid lane. Seu and Adi just can't do the damage. It's a two for one in the mid lane. Overall, a two for two. Two for two. Seo still trying to see if he can get more. Maple as well. Still not out of the, the woods just yet. Is or Seo, he's feeling it, but I don't think he can really chase up. The second ER came, shifts forward, what do we go from? Has the flash, so maybe he's looking for the outplay, but Mystic Shot's just not quite landing. Seo is really starting to build up some confidence right now. Not many people will walk that aggressively in front of a Zion Rakan. And you can see there, Wacko gets delayed as well. So that's a lot of damage in that tier two. But let's have a look at the bot lane first. Yeah, Bong stepping under the tower. Miru comes in and I like that they don't actually engage on this, right? So Maple trying to lock them up underneath the tower. The flick misses. Stun handled Azzy there. But then, yeah, it must have just, yeah, very overextension. War Drinker, the Q, a lot of opportunity to try and bring that one back. And Maple, you're kind of like a one-hit wonder in that bot side. Once you've used that combo, there's not much else in the tank. Yeah, and then we saw, again, kind of fights on two fronts then, and all of a sudden, great hook to start it all off. And then it becomes so scrappy with everything being used. Yeah, everyone on R7 flashing away from the pullback from Wako meant there wasn't really that big damage follow-up initially. And you're kind of waiting on that to restart. Adi went in here thinking he could maybe get the reset, but just didn't quite have enough, enough health bar left. And meant that then it ended up being the uh, the two kills going across in the mid lane to answer for the bot. I mean, Dagda, 23 and a half minutes, eight to seven. It is a 300 gold leaf bars. I mean, that's a that gold graph tells it all. Yeah. There, it just the really does. Like, yeah, it's the, been so close. The gold difference over time, powered by AWS, says everything there. Like the fact that you're getting that much of a back and forth roller coaster on uh, this game so it tells a lot. But you have to look now, Bong. Being careful in that bot lane, realizes there might be some people trying to sneak in behind him, so he's going to back away. I'm going to give like massive, massive props to Bong right now. He was 30 CS down, and now he's nearly a full level up. Like, that's insane to think about what he's doing, because he's just done his job absolutely correctly and hasn't died. I think a huge portion of that, though, is that like, PSG are trying to drag Ozzy into these fights because they realize, hey, look, realistically, this cannon is our big damage dealer. We kind of need him to be at the forefront, but... Uh, it's not really working out for him particularly well. Like every time they try and drag him down, the fights have been a bit dis um, have been separated, so they're not quite able to get him into position to try and carry. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of his builds. Like adding the Morello Nomicon in here is kind of nice against some of the healing from the Renekton, but I think a little bit um, overkill, especially when you're like, hey, look, I need to be the one that kind of steps up in these scenarios to be a big damage dealer. Like I don't think the Morello offers you enough in that scenario. We just see what they want to go for, and we are at a point now where you can burn down this Baron so, so quickly here as R7. They say, cool, you're going to take the Dragon, that's fine, go for it. There's plenty of visions, or ways of getting vision right now, right between the sticks here does go the true shot barrage. 
And everyone just kind of hovering in. We're, we're starting to feel like we're one, one big fight from a really big moment in this game. I like what R7 are trying to do, though. They're trying to play in towards their vision and say, hey, PSG talent, you have to come through these choke points, which is where our composition is stronger, whereas PSG are trying to drag them into their own vision so they can have flanks and try and catch them out of multiple different angles. So at the moment, you can see both teams kind of in that stalemate and nobody really wanting to Waco. commit. Oh! Don't know why he's there, but he's getting all the damage. He got the root as well. They walk straight into the feathers and that's all they needed to do. Now you can see a fight on two fronts. They are getting damage down. Bomb still keeping himself alive. Nicely done with the pop blossom though. And that's a clean enough fight for the side of PSG. They lose one, they get four, and they can just barrel down the mid. They've got a huge minion wave. I mean, Wacko went god mode and that one immediately picks off Audi, sets up PSG. And yeah, the wave is there. The Ace is going to be absolutely left in tatters. I mean, 15 seconds, 20 sec 6 seconds until sales up. Like, they could just go for the end. They might think about it. It is only game one of this best of three. Looks like they're just going to back, back away. away afterwards. They've got the hex gates. Everyone just walking away from this one here. And they're going to turn and burn for the big purple worm. Yeah, immediately going to move over towards that one. Now, you have TP for Mirror, TP for Bong as well. So this could actually be a little bit risky, especially with Hextech gates on the rip Rift as well. Or Seven trying to move in to contest Maple. Maple. Has got himself a fake oh, one. it's a fake one. Fake dust out as well. They have vision on this, so they know what's going down. audi has got ultimate and flash. You can get down to the top of it. Two shot for us. Lands on the woody. They're putting them in. It's fish in a barrel. He goes get the barrel, but can they get out with it? Flash out immediately. Bomb can't get into the fight right now. They're trying to get the stones in, but just can't get the damage out. It was just a little bit too discoordinated from R7. You could see the idea. They just couldn't bring it together. Yeah, they were just a couple of seconds behind and not quite able to get into pit. But we get a replay here. Or seven walking in completely blind. I think PSG have walked away, but Wacko, great setup there. The CC sets up beautifully for Woody then to come in over the wall as he gets the answer on towards the backline because he's got a direct route. And it means that R7 going to move over towards the Dragon, they'll get it, but what else would they get? What else can they get? Junja tried to do a little bit of a drive-by, does get the Cataclysm out. Seo just going to get himself away from this one here. Stopwatch used by Junja means he won't get any more damage done onto him. And R7 are kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. They need to get themselves out. Adi doesn't have Flash and Ultimate because he used it last time. He will be sacrificed. And now Woody tries to go for a little bit more. Seo, no Flash, but does have the Arcane Shift. They're just poking them out right now. And everyone backs themselves away. Good for R7 to get the dragon, but I mean, you still have a Baron to contest with. The problem was that they went for resets on R7. Miro went back to base, so they weren't able to immediately burn down the dragon as PSG were resetting after Baron. So PSG come back out to get the kill. They're now going to get bot tower off of this, and they're going to get this bot inhibitor as well. You just don't have the people you need to defend this, especially with Midwave now there as well. Yeah, you have to be so careful here, Aseo. He just needs to make sure he's not getting caught out. Junja has got a flash to go for a flash flag and drag if he really wanted to, and that's going to be another inhibitor turret Exposed. Do they get the second inhibitor? That's the question. I mean, Wako has been fantastic with these roots as well. You can't even walk forward because he just always has six or seven feathers dotted around the place. Yeah, and look, with that, as soon as Azzy shows up, they're like, cool, we're going to be totally fine to take this. Can't really do particularly much. No, oh, feathers do go flying. Wako does get hit by the ultimate, but I mean, they're turning it all back on the Lions, who is ignited, getting taken so low. Is he? Yes, tick down Woody, finishing that one off in a little bit of supportal combat. And I mean, it's so difficult now to get this damage to stick. And there have got minions. They've got Baron. They might look for the end. They're going to go in. Cataclysm goes in straight away. There's the Pop Blossom down on the two. They're just using these ultimates to try and stop everyone from dying. And Wacko just feeling untouched, unfavorable in this fight is he. But PSG are going to be getting themselves the first win of Worlds 2023. They've had in the KDA. They'll take down the Nexus. And PSG, you can see. Smiles, but mostly for relief, I think, in that a one. A little bit, a uh, little bit. <laughs> not as clean as they would have hoped for, but they still managed to pick up the ring. Absolutely. Look, it definitely, I think it's definitely kind of kudos to PSG. They were thrown a lot in that early game. It definitely felt like R7 came in with a game plan. And thankfully for PSG fans, they were able to kind of bring that back, kind of deal with the adjustments, get themselves into a much better position. And then once they found themselves in those big team fights, like we mentioned with the kind of Venn diagram of death, they found themselves having an awful lot more big kind of uh, ease in these team fights. Yeah, I I think R7, we kind of talked about it, they need to find success in skirmishes. Like the second you start moving in towards, hey, we're gonna have multiple people all in around the same area, that's when it gets dangerous. And they kind of found that success in the early points, but they just never really were able to follow it through with Seo getting caught in the mid lane as they overextend for the mid lane tower. Then they end up with like Audi getting caught at times as well. It just ended up kind of falling apart for them as the game went on. Yeah, and look for R7, I'm pleasantly surprised to be perfectly honest. Yes, it's a bittersweet kind of feeling, but did decently well. They obviously had an opportunity to 
try and take that one, but didn't come together. But I still feel like there's an awful lot more in this series than maybe meets the eye. Definitely feel like they could maybe take this to a 2-1 if they really get the kind of execution down. Yeah, I think execution and also just an easier to execute draft. Like, this was always going to be a tough one. You see just how many opportunities they had with the ultimates that were available for PSG talent. But yeah, a bit sad one. But for our seven, they can try and bounce back. Yep, they absolutely can. But we're going to bounce it over to the analyst desk, over to the fantastic Trevor to break down that game. Oh, fantastic. thank you so much, Machine. Look absolutely. at us. There's all five of us. <laughs> <laughs> the delightful Dagda and the fantastic Trevor. Oh, it's such a good day. Um, listen, coming into that game, I was very nervous, very anxious for uh, R7. I think when we saw the draft play out and saw the potential, especially for the team fighting yeah. from PSG, I also was hopeful Junji was going to be a bit more active on that Jarvin. Slightly slow early game. So before we get into that, let's talk about the draft just a little bit. What did you make of it? Were there any big surprises or shocks? Maybe Raz, I'll come to you first. Yeah, uh, I think the biggest one for me, I like the idea of J4 and Taziah Rakan on the P on PSG side. The criticism that I would levy towards R7 is that they picked Talia on three. Love it, right? You're on red side, picking Talia on three. It's a great flex. You want to maybe hold it for five. They actually just completely punted it on four pick uh, for Viego which gave the opportunity for PSG to go Nico Kennan and make it incredibly difficult for Viego to even play the game. So and to translate for no all sense. the European viewers, punting it means you basically just give up on the aggressive ah! move. You just give away all the opportunities <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, translating NFL to English. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, okay, GB, talk to me a little bit um, in terms of the draft roll, uh, then maybe moving into the early game. What were your expectations and did it go to what you were thinking? I think there was a, a lot of windows that was actually missed by uh, by PSG. I think R7 got exactly what they wanted out of the first few, uh, actually three clears of how the jungle pathed out. Mm -hmm. J4 needs to be a lot more active than Viego does. And while the tracking on PSG at times was on point on uh, on Audi, I don't think they actually made a lot of it. There was multiple stacked waves on top lane yeah. where John Gia could have died. I could have even, even have seen them go for a level two dive on the bot side just to help them out with how the pressure works uh, from a Nautilus Estrial into a Rakan specifically where you can shut down the early aggression from that pick. So I think there was a lot of windows that was missed and that also made the game way slower for PSG than it yeah. should have been, but put R7 in a really good spot. Actually, this is a pretty good example for the, what feels like the rest of the tournament. The multiple patches that we saw, we saw uh, MR nerfs to Renekton, we saw buffs to Kennen. Freak is out there and he's super happy. <laughs> he's he's like, like, I nerfed the magic resist on Renekton <laughs> and they count the pick with an AP oh champion. Oh my god, this they is what I wanted! It. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the early game, talk about the leads. How significant was it? Because I know we were talking, talking about the CS advantages at about eight minutes. Mm -hmm. We were hoping, we were praying Jinji was going to go top, maybe look at Bong, but talk to me about the CS advantages. And, you know, was were you concerned at any point there that R7 were not going to be able to, you know, uh, bounce back? Yeah, I was pretty concerned. Uh, just kind of focusing on how critical it was. We talked about Kennen having that advantage. It was a 23 CS advantage at yeah. eight minutes for the Kennen. Aja was completely controlling that matchup. We saw uh, what was a seven CS lead for Maple, which is fine. It was pretty minimal, but in general, we just saw it, as you mentioned, it was a nice early game overall for R7. We expected a larger deficit, but then I was like, wait a minute, there's a gold lead happening here for PSG. Where is it? Solo lanes. I was like, okay. So the criticism you had a little earlier on, we saw a little bit of it. But I actually think R7 leading into the first drift, I thought that they could have cross mapped and killed Waco because he's usually alone. Instead, what they did is that they sent their TP user down bot to actually stop um, um, the side from getting any plays. But then this is where it becomes really messy. And the point you're addressing, Raz, the fight, the way it starts out from PSG is way too sloppy. You said that J4 gets caught in the beginning, but the cannon still had prior. There's possibility for Nico to come in. Finally, the Nico also comes through, but multiple members have already died. So from the solo laners, with the possible lead you could have had, and the setup with a J4, yes. cannon, and a Nico. That fight was just played out really bad. Exactly. PSG, I think, had all the cards at the very beginning. They had the slow push on bot side. They could get uh, Rakan up towards the top side a little bit earlier. But honestly, Rainbow 7, to the point that you had just made, that play of having their bot lane swap mid was a really good adaptation that gives it, me more hope. It's a simple thing, but something we don't see too often. It was just something that shut down a strategy we saw PSG use a lot, where they just leave Vako alone. One of the things I did see or I did feel throughout many of these skirmishes, a little bit of mechanical misplays, a little bit of questionable decision yeah. making, especially early on in many of those skirmishes. I will chalk that up to first game on stage, yeah. first best off of Worlds, right? But it's not exactly the cleanest opening game for both of these squads. I will say, though, as the game continued to play out, PSG's team fighting composition, the wombo combo, the circles, as uh, Oshin and Dagda were talking about, <laughs> they really started to take over. It's funny because it just didn't stop, right? right? You blow flashes for the J for Cataclysm, you're like, I think maybe this is a... Oh, no, we not. We need to deal with the Kennen Ultimate. Okay, maybe we're good. Ah, 
And then Nico comes from behind. It, it, it felt like there were multiple waves of engages that they had to deal with. Yeah, we can see the way that it leads up to it in this fight that goes pretty much both ways. A good TP interrupt came through in the top lane. But what you need to pay attention to is not actually who dies. It's who's flashing right here. Because this is going to be huge in the Drake fights leading up to it. In the coming fight, uh, Dak already addressed it. R7 comms was a bit hard to play. It becomes even harder when you don't have flashes. In this play specifically, no flash to Leah, no flash on Audi. Seo does have flash. He still gets caught by it, but that makes it even more difficult. And that's why they start losing. R7 starts overextending when they don't have flash. And with your composition going into the composition of PSG, you cannot be allowed to play like that. Yeah, and it feels like their R7 specifically was cutting corners on how they were playing setups on the uh, Siege on mid lane, right? Because you saw the Nautilus that was on the top side of the map expecting that's where the flank was going to be. But yeah, the Nikos was coming through the bot side of the map. What killed me was the fact that the players that did not have flash survived. <laughs> it was Sales that had blink and flash that died for it because he didn't have the reaction speed on that one. So like I, a lot of props to PSG that had a little bit of deficit after the Rift Herald, but then through their mid game, were able to uh, reclaim the game. Yeah, and you know, like big damage from Archie as well. The same goes for, uh, for the side here in this instance. But I also just think that in general, the games are slow in the early game. Mm -hmm. What it really comes down to is how you set yourself up for the Drakes, because that's where the big fights will be happening between the two teams. They both had an incredibly high Drake percentage in yeah. their own regions as yeah. well. So that's where they want to pilot the fights. They need to set themselves up better well. for this instead than moving forward. Watching this game, I initially was very frustrated at PSG. I wanted to see more. I wanted Ginger to yes. be active. I was very angry. Now that we've actually run through this post game, we've talked about it a bit more, they knew they were going to win team fights. They kind of knew they were the better team. Play a little slow. Please. Let's see whether or not those nerves, let's see what those stage set But if there is one thing, like, I would actually love not to see Junji on the Java and just something okay. different. Okay, instead, we do have to go to break. Paid. We do have to go to break. Fair. We're going to head to a ad break when we come back. It'll be game two of PSG versus R7. Bring it back, R7. <laughs> I think you no, 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 no,